this is my home. Yep, I'm lucky enough to live in one of the most beautiful and contested countries in the world. Want to send me a fruit basket or a letter bomb? Yeah, I read the YouTube comments. You can address it to Yermio Danzig, Israel. Ancient country, ancient name. Pretty simple. Or is it? Because this region has been known by quite a few names over the centuries. 100 years ago, a letter addressed to Israel probably wouldn't have been delivered. After all, the place had a different name back then. Palestine. It's all over the official documents, the newspapers, the money. So what gives? Did Israel take over a country that was once called Palestine? And if it was once called Palestine, then why is it called Israel today? Let's get into it. I'm gonna tell you about the history of my home. The name Israel, which has confusingly been used to refer to a place, a person, an entire nation, traces back to the Hebrew Bible. Remember the patriarch Jacob, son of Isaac, grandson of Abraham? Jacob had a big family, and his descendants became known as the children of Israel, or Israelites. We Israelites trace this name back to a fateful wrestling match described in chapter 32 of Genesis. One night, Jacob is attacked by a mysterious, possibly divine figure. They wrestle until daybreak. As the sun rises and the fight comes to an end, Jacob demands a blessing from his attacker. Instead, the attacker gave him a new name, one that means he who wrestles with God. In Hebrew, Israel. In English, Israel. Pretty fitting for a country this contentious, huh? But the Hebrew Bible isn't our only record of the name Israel. In the 13th century BCE, an ancient Egyptian pharaoh named Merneptah commissioned a steel to record various military victories. A steel, by the way, is basically a stone monument with writings or drawings. Among those victories was Merneptah's defeat of Israel and Canaan, another name for the same land. Yeah, this place has had a lot of names throughout history. Merneptah's scribes don't give us much beyond the name, but later stele are a bit more forthcoming. The Tel Dan steel, which dates back to the 9th century BCE, refers to a war with the King of Israel and the House of David, which suggests two things. One, Israel is probably a place named after the Israelites, the descendants of Jacob who lived there. And two, there's archeological evidence dating back to the 9th century BCE for the biblical account of an Israelite king named David. David's kingdom split into two around 930 BCE. The Northern Kingdom retained the name Israel, but the Southern Kingdom, which was home to Jerusalem, took on a different name that starts cropping up in the archeological record around 730 BCE. Judah. Both the Kingdom of Israel and the Kingdom of Judah were home to Jacob's descendants. But in the 8th century BCE, when the Assyrians destroyed the Kingdom of Israel, only the Kingdom of Judah survived. Its territory became known as Judea, the Greek word for Judah. And its people became known as, wait for it, Jews. So the names Israel and Judah are ancient. They denote places where Jews established a monarchy and enjoyed a continuous presence from at least the 12th century BCE until today. And that is why the name Israel, or Judea, is so important to Jewish people. It reaffirms the link between our history and our present, between our peoplehood and our land, our Bible, our liturgy, our poetry, our life cycle events, all refer to us as the children of Israel. And for over 3,000 years, our home has been the land of Israel and the province of Judea with Jerusalem at its heart. Even the conquerors and occupiers of the region knew it as Judah. The Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar referred to his seizure of Judah. The conquering Persians kept the name, assimilating Yehuda into their empire. And when the Greeks and Romans came along, they too referred to the province as Judea. But Israel and Judea aren't the only names on record. During the reign of King David, the Jews' biggest enemy was a group called the Philistines, who came from a place known in Hebrew as Paleshet, and an ancient Egyptian as Paleset, and an ancient Syrian as Palashtu. Hmm, this is starting to sound a little familiar. Could the Israelites' ancient enemy, the Philistines of Palashtu, hold the key to the name Palestine? The answer is probably. Scholars believe that the Philistines made their way from somewhere around here to here in the 12th century BCE, roughly around the time that Israel starts showing up in the archeological record. Because they left no written records, everything we know about the Philistines comes from the folks they warred with. Egyptians, Assyrians, Babylonians, Persians, Greeks, and Romans, and of course, the Israelites. Unsurprisingly, none of the records are flattering. In fact, in modern English, the word Philistine literally means an uncultured bozo. Harsh, 
And no, that's not a racist term, because the Philistines aren't around anymore. They disappeared from written records after Nebuchadnezzar destroyed their cities in the 6th century BCE. The folks living in the region today are not descendants of the Philistines, so you can go ahead and use the term Philistine without worrying that you're going to offend anyone. Still, our ancient friends the Philistines did leave a few things behind other than their bad reputation, like pottery, temples, shrines, and a name, which in Greek became Palestine. In the 5th century BCE, the Greek historian Herodotus took a little road trip around the Levant. In his travelogue, he described a place that sounds quite a bit like modern-day Israel, except he calls it Syrian Palestine. What gives? Okay, maybe he didn't use the name Israel because the northern kingdom no longer existed, but the southern kingdom sure did. Why wouldn't he call it Judah or Judea like everyone else? There's a couple of explanations. The first, popularized by historians like Lewis Feldman and Bernard Lewis, assert that Herodotus was referring only to the coast, that part of the region where the Philistines lived in cities like Jaffa, Ashkelon, and Gaza. According to Feldman, Herodotus didn't venture much farther inland to the majority Jewish province of Judea. This is backed by the first century historian Josephus Flavius, who says that the Greeks called part of that country Palestine. But other historians like Martin Knopf and David Jacobson claim that Herodotus' use of Palestine refers to the whole of the region. They believe that the Greek name Palestine is actually an alternate name for the land of the Jews. Okay, remember when we explained the etymology of Israel as one who wrestles? In ancient Greek, the word for wrestler is palaistis. Sounds an awful lot like Palestine. Could the Greeks have called this land Palestine as a literal translation of the Hebrew word Israel rather than an explicit reference to the Philistines? After all, Herodotus' description of the folks living in Palestine makes them sound quite a bit like Jews. For one, he comments on the fact that the folks in Palestine were circumcised, like Jews. And later writers like Ovid talk about the seventh-day feast that the Syrian of Palestine observes. Sounds a lot like the Jewish tradition of Shabbat. So the name Palestine stuck around, and its exact parameter is ambiguous. In some sources, it's mentioned in tandem with Judea. In others, it's referenced as a land of Jews, and in numerous sources, it's paired with Syria. But then the Romans came along. Cue scary music. Once the Romans took control of Judea, things got really ugly because the Jews fought the Romans bitterly. So bitterly, in fact, that the Romans destroyed the Jewish Holy Temple in 70 CE and carted many Jews away from their home in chains. But the flame of rebellion smoldered. In the second century CE, a Jewish warrior named Shimon Bar Kochva led a strike force against the Roman occupier. He and his guerrilla army gave the occupiers hell. But the Romans had the resources of an entire empire. They crushed the Bar Kochva revolt and renamed the land of the Jews to Syria Palestina. No one knows exactly who chose that name, but historian Louis Feldman suggests it was the Emperor Hadrian. So assuming it was Hadrian, why choose that name? Well, there are two possible reasons. First, the Romans, Hadrian included, were big fans of the Greeks. And the Greeks had used the name Palestine for hundreds of years to refer to different parts of the land we now know as Israel. So as Hadrian consolidated his territory, it made sense to adopt the name that had been used by the Greeks. The second reason is both more nefarious and harder to prove. The historian Louis Feldman writes that the name change was deliberately intended to sever all Jewish connection from the land replacing Judea, or Israel, with the name of the Jews' ancient enemy, the Philistines. That would be pretty on brand for Hadrian, whose early sympathies towards the Jews quickly turned into a vicious anti-Semitism. I mean, the guy built a pagan temple on the ruins of the Jewish holy temple, banned Torah study, Shabbat, circumcisions in Jewish courts, and forbade the remaining Jews of the region to enter Jerusalem except for one day of the year. So yeah, not the Jews' biggest fan. True, Hadrian didn't leave behind a diary with inscriptions like, Today I renamed Judea to Syria Palestina just to stick it to the Jews. But given his record on Jewish people, he may well have appreciated the resonance of ethnically cleansing the region of Jews, whose rebellions had been a thorn in his side for years, and then renaming their home after their historic enemy. Whoever was responsible for the name change and whatever their reason, they certainly made an impact on history, because the name stuck around. When Arab armies swept through the Levant in the 7th century CE, they adopted the name into Arabic as Palestin. As the region traded hands through the centuries, passing to Arab dynasties and Christian crusaders and the Ottoman Empire, it kept the name Palestine, and its inhabitants, Arabs, Samaritans, and Jews alike, were known as Palestinians. This is one of those crazy historical facts, but some folks even called diaspora Jews Palestinians. 
Like German philosopher Immanuel Kant, whose 18th century book, Anthropology from a Pragmatic Point of View, criticized the Palestinians living among us with a boatload of anti-Semitic stereotypes. So yeah, it's true. Modern day Israel was established in a region that was once known as Palestine. Though there was never a self-governing Arab country named Palestine, the region's inhabitants were known as Palestinians. That's why the Jewish newspapers and money and immigration certificates I showed you at the start of this video refer to Palestine. But look closely at those two letters right there. Yep, that's shorthand for the region's other name. The one that had sustained the Jewish people through thousands of years of exile. The one that they'd used since the 12th century BCE. The one that represented their ancient connection to their homeland. Eretz Yisrael. No matter where they were in exile, the Jewish people turned towards Jerusalem and prayed for Eretz Yisrael. The home that fell in blood and fire 2,000 years ago. The home that rose again as a modern state in 1948. The home where I am lucky enough to live.